Okay, continuing uh, in section uh, 1.1, let's do uh, another problem with uh, a little bit more complicated, but this idea now is we're going to look at an equation that say looks like this. So we have one half plus four over X equals five over six. And the first thing you do when you look at that, you see that we do have an X in the denominator now. So one thing that we're gonna talk about quite a bit when we get into chapters uh, three uh, for sure is this idea of what a domain is. And what uh, preview that is a domain is all the valid values of X that when you plug it in the equation, out comes a real number for an answer. And so one number that cannot be the solution is zero because we cannot divide by zero. So when you walk through the analysis and if you actually got the answer of zero, you have to realize that that does not make any sense uh, with regards to that. But you'll see that the answer here is not zero, but another number. So the idea again is let's get rid of all the fractions. And so our strategy in this case is we need to find a common denominator. So you look at these three denominators, two, X and six. And you say, okay, now what would be the common denominator? Well, two uh, goes into six three times. So six, and X would be our common denominator with regard to that. So the idea is, is that we're gonna again, multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator. And again, as long as X isn't zero, you're not changing the value of the equation. <clears throat> and so two goes into six X, three X times. So one half times six X is three X. And you can see that this X here will cancel with this X up here. And so six times four is plus 24. And then on this side of the equation, this six will cancel with that six. And what's left on this side of the equation is five X. Again, the strategy, bring in the three X to the other side. So you subtract three X, you get 24 equals five minus three is two X. Divide each side by two, and you would see X equals 12. Again, the idea, as long as we didn't get zero, this is a valid real number that would solve this equation. So that would be the answer to this. So again, strategy wise. Strategy wise is when you see fractions, try to get rid of them. Uh, with regards to the ability to be able to uh, do some of these calculations, it's just so much easier not to have to deal with fractional arithmetic uh, when you're uh, solving these equations. So the last problem uh, demonstrate here in section uh, one one is a word problem. So uh, what I have up here, and I will share this screen, is a PowerPoint uh, with the word problem. And so let me read this to you. It says, a total of $18,000 is invested, some in stocks and some in bonds. And the amount invested in bonds is half the amount invested in stocks. So how much is invested in each category? So we are in an algebra class. So I will show you the algebra way to solve this. But I do wanna point out one thing that uh, we learned uh, way back when, uh, probably one of the first mathematical ideas that's very powerful is the old guess and check method. And so there's nothing wrong with trying to think about solving a problem that way. And so the idea is, is that you're trying to solve this and you're trying to find a number of stocks 
and the number of bonds where the ratio is a half. So for example, if you had $10,000 invested in stocks, half of that would be invested in bonds and that would be 5,000. And you could say 10,000 plus 5,000 is 15. It's not quite 18, right? So if you think about it, you could say to yourself, well, if I invested 12,000 in stocks and you invest half of that in bonds, that would be 6,000. 12 plus six is 18, that would be 18,000. That's your answer. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, why do I have to model up with algebra? Well, you'll find that we get to some more complicated problems. It would take you maybe days, if not weeks of guessing to try to figure out what the right answers are. So uh, we're gonna start with a problem like this and we'll make it much more complicated as our uh, semester continues. So with that, the strategy is you need to pick a variable and you need to assign it to something in the word problem. And so what I will do is since we use the letter X all the time, I will say X equals the amount uh, invested in stocks. So with that, when you read the problem, what is the amount invested in uh, bonds? Well, the amount invested in bonds would be half the amount invested in stock. So you end up with one half X. And so the idea is, is that you have X, which is the amount invested in um, stocks plus the amount invested in bonds, which is one half X equals the $18,000. So basically when you combine these two, remember that one plus one half is uh, 1.5 X equals 18,000. And so you divide each side by 1.5 or you could do it in fractions. And if you did that, you would say uh, X equals 12,000. So what would be that? That's how much you do in stocks. And so how much do you do in bonds? That would be half that. And so what's half of uh, 12,000 again is 6,000. And that's what you do in bonds. So just to uh, reiterate here real quick. So instead of using 1.5, if you added this together using fractions, you could also say that is 3 halves X equals 18,000. And so when you're dealing with fractions, how do we uh, get make the uh, number in front of the X a one? We're gonna multiply each side by two thirds, right? And so when you multiply each side by two thirds, you would get X equals, this would be 6,000 times two. And that also gives you 12,000 as well. So you could use your calculator and calculate it this way, or you could use fractions and start canceling uh, common uh, factors, et cetera, and do it that way as well. So that ends uh, my examples for section 1-1. So this should give you some tools to jump into uh, your My Math Lab homework. And during our uh, next Zoom session, uh, I'll be available to answer any questions. Thanks.